Speaking of drugs, the whole plot of Thursday wouldn't have happened without them. Everything from the opening smack to the mass murder at the end are driven by the illegal drug trade, which in a way makes Thursday the darkest PSA ever made, if you subtract the Lamborghini and $2 million. Part of why the police are involved in the plot at all is because, well, the drug trade is illegal and a problem for our society. Why is that? Well... Lobbyists petitioned congressmen about it, congressmen listened and passed bills about it, and a new law restricted it. It became a problem for some people because of side effects, but it became against the law because groups framed it as a social problem. So what is a social problem beyond reality television? I'm glad you asked. A social problem is more than a general consensus that the ending to loss was unsatisfactory. It brings to light a topic that requires change in the view of the group proposing it. PETA is one of the more famous groups to attack a social problem, and steps have been made to appease their demands. While not everyone agrees with their platform, their persistence and passion about their topic has led to legislation and policy changes throughout the United States. Not every social problem suggested incites the masses to action. Sometimes what could be a real problem can be undercut by poor presentation when presenting the issue. On that note, let's talk about idiocracy. A film by Mike Judge, people expected a repeat of the biting satire and relatable characters provided by his first film, Office Space. Instead, it was met with a very indifferent reaction and bombed, despite having a huge social point to make. So what went wrong? Can I explain it without throwing something? Let's find out. We open with a very sociological take on the origin of first world problems. As the 21st century began, human evolution was at a turning point. Most science fiction of the day predicted a future that was more civilized and more intelligent. But as time went on, things seemed to be heading in the opposite direction, a dumbing down. The more intelligent pair overthink parenthood's ramifications and try their best to prepare for it before partaking, while the one who may have a GED someday is batting a thousand on making a very broad and diverse family tree. This film really has my attention so far. It tackles a very broad topic in a precise and humorous fashion, much like Mike Judge's foray into office politics. This could very well be his greatest contribution to cinema yet, as long as he stays on message and doesn't start... ...doing that. Yeah, we'll get there. Meet Joe Bowers, our perfectly average main character. Seriously. This cameo by the director proves that. He's been selected to participate in a military experiment to perfect Prothean stasis. Well, he and a streetwalker named Rita. She's on loan from her pimp, Upgrade. Which he spells thusly. That's a major problem with this movie. Blatant stereotypes as punchlines. There's nothing to be gained from these stock portrayals. Upgrade has no on-screen presence, and yet he's one of the main focuses of Rita's plot, and all we know about him is he's a pimp who does pimp things and wears bling. I could elaborate further on this, but we actually have an expert in stock characters in this field. DM? Ooh, as the scary DM obeys me or I takes away your XP's! Who are you? Mo Weren't you listening? Ah, I was a scary DM and I go on Okay, you're clearly not the DM. Who are you? Uh, well, of course I is. I mean, look around. I got like the big spooky basement. I got like the creaky chair and like the, the DM screen and like the dice over here. And I got the camera. And I also got the rapping skills, yo. What, 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 what? Oh, oh, stop, stop. Who the hell are you? It's Kelvin, you know, from the fridge. Wait, no, I don't care. Where's the DM? Oh, that. Oh, where, um, you need to worry about that, yo. It's, it's, it's cool. Now, if you didn't take away my stuff, I can get us out of this. What the? What the? Ugh. So how can the Kelvins help you today? Well, do you know anything about the use of stereotypes? Do what? Stereotypes. And no, not like Sony. Oh, you like the RC8? Never mind. I'm just gonna check back later. Oh, oh, I know what you mean, I know what you mean. It's the Sony types, the fillings. You know, like how all the black people likes the fried chicken and how all the Asians is really bad drivers because their eyes all slanted. And then how all the white folks is rednecks and banging their sisters. Yeah, actually. It's the negativized attributes that don't be lambasted to us in the movies and the TV that they be easily become the recognizable Sony types. 
And that way it's like it's like a rerun, you know? Y'all see the rerun, you know what's gonna happen, you seen it happen before, so your brain done fill in the rest of it, and you get no entertainment value out of it. It's lazy, it's stupid, I don't like it! Thank you very much for your input, Kelvin? From the fridge. Of course you are. Thanks again. It ain't no thing. So hey, what's the rage move with me? What 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 what? So after meeting and discussing the plan to put Joe and Rita into their stasis pods, Rita tries to flake out. Joe calms her down and has the hilarious confusion that her pimp is her boyfriend. It's the average nice guy thing to do. My god, the average Joe's name is Joe. This movie is made of cellophane. The military scientist comes in and... Okay, my niggas, we're almost set here. Wait, what'd he say? Okay, my niggas, we're almost oh, so set there's here. the reason the critics right hated now. it. I knew there must have been something besides... Everything else. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, hold! Can I help you? Wait, 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 wait. Is there wait, helping wait, you? Wait, wait, wait. It's, it's you and Rita. They're going in the fridge. Really, that was the joke you were setting up for, really. What joke? There is. Kelvin, you have to wait until I call for you. Oh, you mean like I owned a cell phone? Oh, that's cool. It ain't working years, yo, but uh, I got this antenna. Maybe it'll work now. Uh, so, anyway, Joe and Rita both end up in stasis for 500 years, allowing society to change in new and unimagined ways. For instance, television is now surrounded by ads at all sides, every problem is passed through a machine instead of being addressed by a person, and text talk has become widely accepted as the way to spell. The more I describe it, the more horrifyingly accurate this portrayal sounds. Why did this movie do so poorly again? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's why. Interjecting nonsense, albeit entertaining, is not a substitute for a real point. Hello? Unasocio! Is you there? My god, you're literally calling me. Yes, I'm here. What? Oh, 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 good, good, good. I got some point to make. Like undercutting my point with the whole interjecting nonsense thing? The Nazis? Are Nazis back? Are they zombies? Nonsense, not Nazis. In fact, I don't even know where you got Nazis. You, what do you want? I don't want you to forget the main underlying reason why society don't go downhill the way it has. And why is that? The automation. The automation? Yeah. Actually, that would explain quite a bit. Go on. Hello, students. I is Professor Kelvin, and today... Wait, wait. Yes? You're a professor. Please hold all questions until the end of the lecture. You see, class, as the technology gets better and better and better, the intelligence required to use said technology gets lower and lower and lower. Effectively, as technology skyrockets, we get dumber. And, given enough years passing, well, we all gonna be idiots by that time. But someone still has to maintain that. I don't see your hand raised. Ah, <sighs> uh, yes, uh, the... the Spaniard. Someone's still maintaining these machines. Even if it's been 500 years, they still require maintenance, which requires thinking. Which means not everyone came down with a terminal case of stupid on the same day. That's a fair point. You did the assigned reading, didn't you? That, no, I am done. Thank you, Kelvin. That's Professor Kelvin. I'm not calling you that. Does not play well with others. This is getting away from me. Where was I? Oh yeah, Joe was declared the most intelligent man in the world. No, that can't be what I wrote. Joe is recognized as the most intelligent man in the world. The man with 100 IQ is the greatest mind alive. He uses his superior intellect to put water onto plants because the people of the United States started watering it with off-brand Gatorade. This is seriously testing the suspension of my disbelief. Oh, 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 I got to suspend this right here, yo. God, not you again. Oh, I never left, yo. I was like the Phantom. I got me a mask. You're trying to reference Phantom of the Opera's I'm There Inside Your Mind, and you don't even have a mask. I is the Phantasmo of the Operatus. Has inside the man. Okay, okay, Kelvin, stop. Please, seriously, just stop. What? What the hell is wrong with you? Well, if you wants to be the big old Scarlet Pimpernel about it and reveal my secret to the ages, I got the Ebonics Plague. The Ebonics Plague? It ain't funny, yo. It's terminal. You can say that again. 
Well, that would be repetitive, and I only got 70 years. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, that didn't help the headache. Did you have a point? Huh, of course I do, yo. <laughs> that was a huge box. Can I give me some of that? Oh, right, anyway, anyway, back to what I was saying. After Luke Wilson pushed the water on the plants and bankrupts the Gatorade company overnight, he sent to rehabilitation, and they got the monster trucks, and the flamethrowers, and- Hang on, you've actually been paying attention to the plot? Well, you know, this is a review, and like, I hear when you with it, why would I not pay attention? It's just surprising is all. That or I've fully got a concussion and I'm hallucinating. Rehabilitation is another fascinating part of this story. In today's society, going to rehab is basically viewed as a last-ditch effort to either get clean or die. It's surprising how subtly the film portrays this point by making rehabilitation literally into a public display that either ends in the complete forgiveness of past crimes or immediate death. Oh yeah, the tablets will be all over that and they'd be loving it. Guess what folks? Lindsay Lohan going into rehab. AGAIN! This time she wearing a bunny suit and hopping away from monster trucks. Does she live? Flip to the centerfold to find out! Exactly. It's exploitation for the sake of entertainment in the name of helping someone the audience vaguely knows and hardly cares about. Hold up! You say you don't care about Lindsay Lohan? So, after trying to sway the crowd only to have them ask for his death, the plants finally start to grow. Joe is released from the rehabilitation upon this news, and shortly thereafter made President of the United States. Hey! I'd vote for him. Why? Well, he is the smartest man in the world. It's like, by today's standards, he average. But like, by the downgraded society standards, he a genius. He's 100 got super buffed. And the unbelievably average is lauded as the peak of genius. That's the real problem here. Oh, well, you see, it's all simple. It's like, you see, we did. DM back, yo. So after the smoke clears and the credits start to roll, what have we learned? Well, what I've learned today is that Mike Judge had a great concept and decided to draw dicks all over it. Whatever potential the first 10 minutes of this film has starts to wear thin about 11 minutes in, when he starts just blatantly throwing obscene and pointless scenes at the audience. <laughs> almost. I almost made it through this review without throwing something. Almost. <laughs> That's the real issue. So much of the film, even the humorous parts, just feel forced. There's never a break from the unbelievable amount of stupidity, and that much overexposure to the same punchline gets old quickly. If you ever do feel inclined to watch this, just watch the first 10 minutes and stop. Sure, it's going to leave you wondering what else happened from that bright start, but the hope of what the rest could be is far more fulfilling than what actually came about in this bucket of Brondo. I'm the other socio, and I don't have a sign-off. Here's some more prizes for me. Here on Mary's. Dear Blender. You won't blend into the background with a senior Oh, home. won't you so help first defender? Oh, toaster. Caught up in the popularity ratings. Don't you put the burn on. in the kitchen or crying in the bedroom all night. I is the fanatismo of the apparatus. As inside the mind, something else goes here. Big hoity-toity song, like the Gorgonzola.